So, Dario, we are ready to start. Okay, Francesca, thank you very much. So you can hear, you can hear us. So let me welcome uh, very warmly Dario. Dario is a former student of Geeks Academy. He attended our program, Data Science and Artificial Intelligence with Python, nearly two years ago. Since then, he disappeared. And we found him, you can't believe, but very up into the North Europe, in Glasgow, UK. And once we found him, and we heard his story, his successful story, and we understood he could inspire other people uh, in doing what he did, we invited him to the Meet the Geek. He's a perfect example of a successful geek. So, Dario, thank you very much for being with us this evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, well, thank you, Tony, for inviting me. It's a great pleasure for me to be here and to share my experience and how the Geek Academy did introduce me to what's now it's my passion. Well, it's not so data and Python. So thanks a lot. Yes. So let me uh, explain for uh, people uh, following us in uh, Get Response and on our page on Facebook. So Meet the Geek is a rendezvous we organize every week on Thursday evening. And we invite our former students who are at the present successful professionals working in the field they've been studying for. And in some way they have been able to fulfill the dream or to realize the project. And um, this is uh, one of those cases we really love because um, uh, most of our students uh, who study in Rome or Milan, they con continue to live then uh, either in both uh, cities or in Italy. In this case, Ta Dario decided to move, to move abroad, to move in UK, and he has been able to get a very interesting position. He will explain uh, us very shortly what he does in his job. He's a junior data analyst. And uh, so the very first question, Dario, is what does do a junior data analyst? Or let me put it in a different way. What do you do when you go to job in the morning or when you start smart working from home? So just explain us uh, and let understand us what do you do with data? Okay. <laughs> and through that, we will finally understand also what a, a data analyst uh, does. So please go on. Uh, what, I do, what do I do with data? That's, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> okay. So what a data analyst does? Well, um, it's the figure of a data analyst is pretty flexible, um, meaning that you can actually get on, on on many projects and different tasks because you have capabilities to analyze data, to visualize data, to get insight and indeed information. Um, however, what I've been mainly work on has been on uh, data migration. So um, data migration, we can define it as a mare magnum. So it's like a huge word uh, uh, that we can, uh, I'm not gonna go through all of it tonight because I think we don't have time. So I'll probably, I'll try to give you a broad overview of what, uh, of what it actually looks like. And data migration, it's basically moving data from one data repository to another. Data repository that we take the data from, it's called a source and the data repository where we actually uh, leave the data, it's called the target. Within, the, within the, the, the source and the target, there is what we can can be called as a data pipeline, where data okay. flow inside, they get clean, they get transformed, they get validated, and then finally they get migrated to the to indeed to the target. So just want to spend some 
quick words about the, the pipelines. Um, the pipeline, it's mainly focused, but not only, on data quality. In the data fields, I can say, um, when we talk about data quality, it means that if a data has high quality, it means that the data is fit for the purpose. The data that we are using, it's good to, it's good to be used for the purpose that we are um, we have, we have planned. We have a plan. And uh, so this implies, for example, that in this data migration process, you have a complete knowledge of where the data come from, the structure that the structure of the data and on the on the data repository, the source. But at the same time, you need to know how data are gonna be uploaded, in what structure, in what format, because that's gonna be reflected in the pipeline of changes. For example, and what if the, the, the data format of your data, sorry, the date format of your data in the source is month, day, and years, but then at the end in the target, you want day, month, years, because that's the only thing accepted. Mm -hmm. Then you have no deeds, and this is gonna be reflecting in the transformation phase or in the pipeline. So this process of working, cleansing, transform, load data has a name, no? ETL. Oh, yeah. well, okay. There are people oh, who say explain. Yeah, yeah just tell us some words about that. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, ETL stands for extract, transform, and load. Um, there are people that say the ETL is the same as data migration. There are people that okay. say it's not the same, but it might, it might differ on, on some instances. But yeah, I think the concept is more or less there is some uh, overlapping between the two. So okay. ETL, we have extraction indeed of details. Oh, sorry, details of data. Then we have indeed transformation, as we just discussed, and then we have loading. Loading here takes the name of migration. Perfect. And usually migration does not take place all of, all of a sudden. We have uh, a pre-migration checks, which are run in uh, testing environments and boxes. So we so by doing these checks, we are sure that the data that are uploaded are in the correct format. They they do not get changed all, all of a sudden. For example, you are uploading a five comma zero, and then all of a sudden you find yourself with a fifty. That's gonna create huge problems. So once we have run all these checks, and then we we are pretty sure that everything works correctly, we can migrate the work the entire workflow into the into the target. And uh, after that, we have the last phase, which is called the post load migration. The post load migration, it's simply based, uh, it's sorry, it's mainly based on uh, doing um, data reconciliation, what's called data reconciliation, which means you keep running both the data target and the data and the data source. And you keep comparing the data that you have in both sources that you are sure that they are the same. And then once after a while, after you have ensured that the process works works correctly for a couple of like days or also months, then you can stop thinking about the, the old data source and they can just completely move to the new data repository. This mm -hmm. is a broad overview of how like data migration works. Of course, it's there are differences, there are nuances, but that's basically some key steps. You prepared for us a slide which can give us a, a better pictures of uh, how a, a junior data analyst work, how he um, uh, uses his time. So let, let's have a look at it together so you can explain it to us. Yeah. Um, what's always funny when you talk to people is that when you say, I'm a, okay, first of all, data analyst, data science, I use this word interchangeably. So um, in, pra in practice, it might, in, uh, sorry, in theory, they, might, they are indeed different. In practice, the, the line is not so clear. Yeah. So forgive me for that. Um, so when you talk to people and, you, uh, and, you, and, you ask, and they ask you what you do, they oh sorry, and you ask them what you think I do, they always think that data science play around with data. They uh, create cool graph. They... Uh, carry they implement uh, some machine learning techniques or they create some predictive models which indeed all these things are true but they are just the tip of the iceberg meaning that we we do that but uh, the percentage of that is like minimum and this graph which is a uh, which uh, uh, come from Forbes an article from Forbes uh, 
uh, actually explain it pretty well. It, indeed, as we can see, like 60% of the time spent by uh, data science is on cleaning and organizing data. <laughs> that's, why, that's why the funny name data janitor. So these, in, uh, oh, this, this, sorry, there's a question. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, this indeed is uh, uh, important. How important are data for AI? I think this can be answered by saying why data cleaning and pre data cleaning is so important because, well, first of all, artificial intelligence include machine learning and all this kind of stuff. It's so important because of a simple con concept that more or less all of the data science knows, I would say all of us, it's that garbage in, garbage out. That's actually, I think it's the, it's the, main, it's the main concept that can explain why this graph. What does it mean? It means that, for example, if you want, as uh, Katia asked, uh, if you want to develop a machine learning model, but you feed the machine learning with bad data, low quality data, so data which are not fit for the purpose, then you cannot expect to get high quality results because that's never going to happen. So this is really important why we spend so much time on cleaning, transforming data, indeed also selecting data because now with the internet and everything, data are created like every single millisecond, like in huge amount. Exactly. We also must be sure that the data that we get, that we select are indeed the correct one that can help us to extrapolate information. And then we, then we need to clean them. Clean them means, for example, what if we have a data set that contain null values? If they contain null values, how do we handle them? Do we, do we, do we uh, replace them with zeros? Do we, which could be an option, but it's not always the best one. We could replace them with the mean or something else because that's gonna affect your final results. Or a last example, for example, what if we um, have uh, we can have duplicates or what if we have inconsistent data? For example, we are analyzing uh, the, the street of a, of, a, of a city and we have one, ex two exam exact street with a, the same like a street name, street number. But when, what if the zip code is different? Which one is correct? How do we know? And do, all of this is data cleaning, data, clean, data cleansing and 60% of our time. 60%. So in this 60%, we can uh, uh, see lots of terms such as also that is it also data preparation? Because when you speak of data, there are a lot of terms. We, you explain us that data migration can also be meant with ETL, so extra transform load. Then there is data quality. So the idea is to introduce the data quality so that later on can be used for uh, business intelligence, for example. Data cataloging, I also learned the term, but they all mean more or less exactly what, what you said. If I can add something to what you said, uh, to the to the question of uh, Katia, how important are data for AI? First of all, AI is there to do what human beings are not able to do. So artificial intelligence is able to recognize patterns, patterns that human beings would not be able to recognize it to catch. The more data you are you have the easier it is for an artificial intelligence or might be easier to find patterns. So artificial intelligence is able to extract additional value from data which might human beings miss in, in doing that because of quantity of data and so on and so forth. So let me uh, ask you, um, Dario, how how did you take advantage? Uh, how did you uh, take advantage from the course you attended in Rome, the data science and artificial intelligence with Python? <laughs> that's <laughs> that requires an elaborated answer. Um, well, if I can go back to the 2018, that was the year when I joined the Geek Academy, and uh, that as that was actually a pretty busy year for me because I was finish up, finishing up with my uh, last year of university, my Bachelor of Economics. 
I don't know if people are listening, but I just want to, or like they will, I mean, people are listening from my same background. That's what I meant, sorry. Uh, but I want just to stress out the point that I had no background in technology. I had no clue about what Python was. I had no clue about any technology or anything related to that. However, there was one important thing that made me reflect on that was that I, at that time, I, I knew I, that I was close to entering the market of work. And at the same time, I actually saw that there was a consistent sector which was always keep increasing, and that was the sector of technology and, and data, or what's called now big data. And that's what, and that's that's actually what brought me to uh, to join the Geek Academy and to take uh, to take on the Python course. To answer your question, I think first of all, it helped me develop my what's now it's my passion. It started it started out as a necessity for me to become more technical, to learn something new that actually could help me in the market in the in the in the and finding a job. But now it's it's turning out to be my passion. Also from a personal point of view now, now using Python, well not only now but also during for example my master's study helped me to think differently about how to solve possible problem, in how to implement solutions and Actually, why not? I found many friends that now I still I still talk to that we exchange pieces of code and we ask each other what do you think about it, which is pretty funny. We just it's random code that do stuff, but it's, you still uh, you create network and that's pretty amazing. And I also remembered, which was pretty nice and helped me a lot in uh, developing my interest, that at Geek Academy we used to have like uh, mix up classes. So there was me with no knowledge. And then next to me, I had like some guys from ethical hacking or <laughs> big data from big data. Remember big data, um, uh, big data class. And what usually happen is that during breaks, we just start talk to each other and you just start hearing some words. And then those at that hearing those words made me wonder there is more that I have no idea about. And that actually every single day made me grow my made my, my interest grow and so if you ask me like there are so many answers i could give but that's i think making my need a passion i think how it helped me the most okay okay that's true that's true because at geeks academy uh, students of cyber security of blockchain uh, development or big data junior professionals they all share some common subjects and python is one of them python, python is very versatile it's it's in united states has been more and more introduced into university as the first uh, coding language to study because a very um, a low rate of um, abandoning the studies because you know there are other other softwares which uh, which are a bit more complicated but Python, it's nice, you know? I always tell the story, once I was at the very first lesson of Python, and uh, after 45 minutes, students were able to have hello world on the terminal. So <laughs> uh, that, that's a pleasure, you know, for someone who just learned coding, it, it's, it's amazing to see that you are able to, to visualize something that you have just programmed. I don't know what you think of that. When we were talking, there was one thing that came up to my mind and which I love about Python is that people are can get to the same solution through different channels. And that was something that uh -huh. came, I learned from you from uh, well, the Geek Academy and I can see now. And that's just amazing because you can get to the same results, but people will, will code differently. And that's actually, I think that's also a way to do get to know people and so yeah I agree that with you that Python is a really flexible language that can bring different characters all together yeah so that's why I was laughing great and so tell me a little bit about your life in Glasgow because we have also okay this evening we have an international um, let's say panel people they are 
uh, watching our streaming uh, from different countries, but I see also many Italians. So how is life in Glasgow? Uh, it's pretty cold. I mean, now I think it's around 12 degrees. Uh, so I Only say, 12 degrees? Yeah, I would say bring a jumper if you can. Um, but yeah, life is really nice. Uh, a lot of greens if you like. Um, well, to be honest, I do go out for some runs and I'm still looking for a basketball court to play basketball with, uh, to play basketball. Oh. So, so do you manage also to find some time for your hobby, for your, yeah, because we, you're yeah, fond of basket as, as I can remember. Yeah, I, I do. I do try. As I said, uh, I couldn't find any basketball court still yet to play basketball. So I'm for now, I'm just keeping up with the, with uh, runnings um, in the meantime. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's that's it. It's pretty cool, yeah. Great. And how is the, the uh, atmosphere? How is working in an international environment? I mean, for you, Italian, who moved from Rome there, I think it's really challenging because uh, you see different people, different nationalities. Well, first of all, different language, so you get to know that. Um, but actually, it's good because. In, I mean, from my perspective, I always think in terms of in terms of data, the technology and data area is a is a sector which ne ne never sleep, never sleep. You wake up tomorrow and there is a new software, or you wake up two days from day today and there is a new coding languages, and and so being being in a such environment gives you the, the the willingness to keep learning, keep developing, keep keep. I mean, actually, uh, chatting with you on uh, on uh, I don't know, chatting with you, sending sending each other email to ask, oh, are you doing some course on cybersecurity? Are you doing those online? Can I attend them? Which actually keeps me always eager to learn something new. So, from my perspective, is amazing. And yeah, so that's very nice what you're saying because in the in past meetings we had the uh, meet the geek, we have been speaking about not to attach to single technologies but to be tool agnostic you know but you are going even farther you are saying that you have to be uh, curious and that you are passionate even going beyond the the, the limits and the frontier of uh, data analysis and you have been speaking about cyber security because at the very end there are no frontiers among between those fields you know because Cybersecurity is keeping safe data, for example, on which uh, a, a data analyst has been working for a long, for a long time, for example. So, I think the key is to to be always very active, curious, and willing to get updates. You know, technology is going is developing very quick, and uh, we are experiencing as Geeks Academy in those days. Uh, because of also COVID-19, there is a huge interest. You know, in Italy, in, in, the, in the frame of a night, from evening to morning, we introduced digital transformation, we, we, which would have occurred to Italy probably 15 years. <laughs> and now everybody's waking up and say, wow, I think we have to catch up, you know? There is some, some work to be done, okay? Uh, but... <laughs> It's true that uh, in certain places like yours, I mean, we ourselves as Geek Geeks Academy, every year we, we have been in different countries, in Florida, in Singapore, in South Korea, just to monitor the new trends so that we are able to introduce it, to offer our students some of, of the very last technologies which can be useful then to, to work and to go abroad, okay? And as, as, as you did. Great, Dario. I think we had a very, a very rushing um, video interview. We have been saying a lot of things. We have been speaking about data analytics, data analysis, data migration, what you do with data, and um, how did you take advantage uh, from our courses. And um, I think those who have been listening to us, they can get some... Um, a uh, clue about uh, what it is about working in uh, in the field of data science. Thanks to your enthusiasm, I think you have been able to transmit a lots of energy and enthusiasm, which is, uh, I think, the most important 
part, we always say that sometimes when they come to Geeks Academy and they ask, what are your, what, what are the prerequisites, you know? We always say curiosity and passion. Then all the rest can be acquired, you know? You have just to uh, devote some of your time, learn, but what keep you going further and making career is exactly what you mentioned. I mean, this energy, this enthusiasm. And uh, so we are looking forward to meeting you someday in Rome, where you studied, or in Milan, where we have been uh, having uh, uh, many courses in the last year. Even if in the last months we went online as to, uh, so most of our courses, I would say all our educational offer now is online and you from Glasgow and the people from New York, do they call the girl from New York? Hopefully is one of them, I don't know. Okay, let's, um, let me stop here. Let's ask uh, who is following us. Are there any questions to ask? Hello, ah, this is Francesca. Hello from New York. Great, great. Are you the one that we have been talking today to? They told me we have an American from New York. Great, great. That's cool. Yes, that's you. So Glasgow, New York, Rome. Nice, nice international, nice international evening. So, uh, any questions before we uh, stop our meet the geek tonight? Let's see what is typing Francesca from New York. You see, Dario, we yeah, started I'm... making online edition of Meet the Geek, and then it opened up new worlds, such as United States. So, uh, I wanted to ask, did, I wanted to ask, did you take time off or did you take the course while studying, Dario? Uh, that's a good question. Um, thanks, first of all. Uh, no, I was studying and I was studying, writing my dissertation and attending the geek course. Um, I must say it wasn't easy because courses, if I remember correctly, were run from uh, 6 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Exactly. Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday should be. And twice per week. Yeah, evening. It's from 6.30 yeah. up to 10 p.m. Yeah, and it was indeed challenging. But I think there is one keyword which helped me out there. Actually, two keywords, which one is a passion. I already said that before. And the second one was indeed a uh, commitment. There were indeed time during classes, which I had no clue about what was going on. <laughs> I think when we talk about uh, object oriented like classes, I had no clue about what was going on. I said, that's going too fast for me. But then it was about commitment. It was about understanding, uh, going home, understand, uh, learn by myself. Also ask, uh, they were pretty actually open. If you they just send you your email or phone number you can just give it a go and say i have this problem i cannot code this and they just help you out um uh and so yeah i was doing the same thing which is doable but you need to have passion and commitment yes by the way uh, now mm, next edition of data science and artificial intelligence we pattern will be online and so we still keep it twice per week but we shorten a little bit the time so it won't be four academic hours but they will be just two hours so it will be a bit lighter because it's different being in a class or you know uh, studying even if it is live online uh, thanks Francesca. <laughs> so great thank you francesca uh Angelica, did you always want to become a data analyst? The, straight, uh, the answer is no. As I said, um, <laughs> this is the first time. <laughs> Great. No, but what no, but as I said, has been has been a journey which started with fear and started with the unknown of what I was going into. But then 
thanks to geek, thanks to commitment, thanks to passion, thanks to uh, work, thanks to time, time studying, it all create, turned into passion, into passion, into what I wanted to do. And now I can answer yes, now it's what I wanted to do. But back in the days, it's definitely no. It's a big no. I, I didn't want to spend all my, all my days in front of a laptop, which is what I'm doing right now. So definitely no. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Usually, you know, we always play with the concept of nerds and geeks. So we turn, so there are nerds who come and run in our programs and we say we transform them into geeks, you know, we make them more social, you know, more PR oriented. But your case is different. So when did you enroll then into data science? You were just curious or so you... Uh, oh, so many, so many questions today. Um, well, it's good, good. Please ask question. Um, I enroll. You mean in the Geek Academy or? Yeah, in the Geeks Academy. Cause. Oh well, first of all, I had a chat with you, remember? And I was like, he's talking about something I have no idea about. <laughs> and at the same time, I knew that what you were talking about was indeed. The, one of the biggest uh, one with the, one sector with the biggest increase in the work demand. Okay. So okay. I said I I I just said to myself, try try to make make your curriculum more um, technical, and that's the answer. Great, great, great. So you had the feeling something is happening. I want to be there. We always say, I want to be on the right side of history, you know? There <laughs> yeah. when something is going to happen. So you had the feeling, you had the, an intuition, and finally you had the opportunity to uh, fulfill and to realize, yes. Yeah, as you, said, as you said, I think, well, why uh, she finishes typing? I had, the, I had the feeling that the world was moving towards a direction which was digitalization, which is digitalization still. Which is exactly, exactly. And I was not on the opposite side, but I was a little bit behind, which I'm still, because I think the word digitalization is moving so fast that I'm still behind. So that's, that's, um, uh, that, that's interesting. Sorry, I was reading the question. Are you currently yeah. attending courses while working? Uh, yes. I am. Uh, I'm actually uh, studying now to become a um, solution art solution cloud architect, and that goes back to what um, <laughs> to what we have discussed before. Always keep learning. Always exactly. uh, de develop new knowledge. And also, as, as you mentioned, be technological agnostic. Tr try not to just go in one direction. Exactly. So yes, the answer is yes. Keep I will keep learning. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just keep really technological agnostic. This is the very, this is a principle that whoever decides to enter into this data economy world has to keep in mind. First of all, because there are there are so many different things. They are so interesting, and. You never know where the opportunity can come out. We also had uh, in one of our former uh, Meet the Geek, Ali, he started, he studied in Geeks Academy. Uh, uh, he attended the course Big Data Junior Professional, 360 hour, six month study. And he ended up after two years to become a, data arch a cloud architect, cloud architect, because he found out this is something he really likes. Okay, so he's fond of and uh, he didn't even know it existed as a profession before. Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. we know it's going to be one of the fields which will develop the most thanks to the smart working and so on and so forth. Okay, great. So we had also the opportunity to answer to a few questions. Great. Dario, first of all, and again, I would like to thank you. It's I a great we pleasure. Have, uh, one more question. It's a great pleasure to have you here. You know, uh, it's always uh, for me very exciting to to interview people that I met two, three, four years ago, and in the meantime, they have been able 
to do what they had planned to, or to, you know, realize uh, to find the path which will uh, uh, be the future uh, professional career. So I invite you in a year time. We'll see what happened in the meantime. There are going to happen so many things, I'm sure, because of many reasons. And uh, so we'll see in a year from now what became uh, from you. And uh, good luck in your career. We know you work in a multinational company. Uh, there are plenty of opportunities. So we are sure that you won't miss them. And uh, thank you again for inspiring other students, other people who will decide to start their career in the data economy field. And let's keep in mind that he did not even know what exactly would he do with this uh, program, the data science and artificial intelligence we planned. He had a feeling, he had an intuition, and finally ended up to be right. Okay, so that's that's the very important thing. Dario, thank you very much. Well, I don't know if you want to say a last word. Um, no, I would I say to everybody, stay geek stay and geek, see yeah. you next week. Next week we are going to meet a senior data analyst. He attended the, uh, our course of Big Data Junior Expert in Milan. He's currently working in this position. He was not a, a data analyst, but he will tell us more about it next week. Again, see you. Thank you again, Dario. Thanks. See you. Bye. Ciao. Yes. Goodbye.